Hola a todos, quiero que aprovechen la oportunidad de ver este video de una entrevista que se le hizo a un molestador de niños que estuvo preso por 12 años luego de haberse visto culpable por haber molestado a más de 300 niños. Es importante que tengas una, un cambio de visión al momento de ver este video. No se trata de pararte en juzgar, porque vi que muchas personas lo que hacen es conectarse con rabia que merece esta persona por todas las, las cosas que hizo. Sin embargo, quiero que veas la estrategia que utilizó él para poder llegar a, la, a tener en sus manos a más de 300 niños. Es importante que puedas entender qué estrategia utilizó para evitar que tus hijos y tú caigan en el juego de estas personas. Cuidado, no se trata solamente de caer en paranoia y que tus hijos son los culpables de su debilidad al caer víctimas de ellos. Es que también sus familiares, personas que como tú, podrían creer en los momentos de máxima vulnerabilidad que estas personas que se muestran agradables, amables, inteligentes, cercanas, confiables, son las que toman el control de este espacio y pueden abusar de ellos. Así que espero que generes cambios de inmediato al momento de escuchar este video, esta entrevista con este depredador de niños. How did you get them alone? Grooming. Um, I would check out their family situation. I would check out their clothing to see how well they were, you know, financially. I would check out their social interaction with other kids. You know, when we were on the ballparks or on the, on the gym floor, you know, I would make sure which ones I wanted to molest. I would give them special attention, congratulate them, talk to them when I know that I would never be allowed to talk to anybody else, you know, aside from everybody. I would give them the attention that a, an official is not supposed to give anybody. And it made them feel like, wow, he's paying me attention. You know, it, it is a direct form of grooming. Were there certain characteristics that you looked for in children before molesting them? In children, yes, but more I also looked at their families. If I thought the father was a threat, I would not approach the child. If I thought that the child had friends that he would tell, I would not approach him. If I thought the child had friends that were in the same capacity he was, I would approach him. For the simple fact that if I could molest him, I could lure him into believing grooming him into believing that he would enjoy it and therefore I could manipulate him into having his other friends come and be molested by me as well. So perhaps a, a, a child that doesn't really have a whole lot of friends, maybe not really a strong family, things like that. Yes, no spiritual values, um, weak in education, you know, needs help in many ways. Um, even from uh, split parenting, you know, has a mother who may be having problems with the family, you know, well, here comes superhero in to help out, you know, wow, well, thank you very much. No problem. You ever need me to take him away for the night so you can have a night out? No problem. It works. How did you find your victims? I found my victims moving from town to town. I scoped them out on um, school grounds, I scoped them out in Little League Diamonds, um, I scoped them out in my own backyards, my neighborhoods and things like that. Um, I worked with people who had younger brothers, I socialized with those people so I could get in touch with their younger brothers and begin the grooming process. It would take time, but I knew what I was doing, it was all calculated. I mean, this is nothing that happened overnight. You know, I knew, and I planned it all. It started out where I would move from one town to another. When I got located in one town, um, I would, you know, survey the children in the town to see. It was always a small town. It was never a big one. Um, because big towns have big police forces, and big police forces tend not to be very friendly. Small towns have small police forces. 
you know, they probably never even heard of a child molester or a sex offender or never even had to deal with one. I knew that. At least I played upon that. And um, I got involved in Little League Baseball because I knew from my high school days that I could umpire Little League Baseball. I could umpire baseball. I was good at it. I was good at refereeing basketball and other sports because I could not play worth a crap in high school. But I enjoyed the sport so much that I did not want to not be a part of it. So I took up managing in high school. And then our coaches allowed me to referee intramural. And when I got to referee intramural, that gave me direct access to the younger boys. And that was how my molesting began, was in high school, when I had direct access to the younger boys through the intramurals program.